edition of the Everlast Power video series. Today we're going to be looking at a brand new PowerTig 185 Micro. It's an AC-DC machine with basic features and no many, not many frills, but a really good welder for the size that it is. We're going to be looking at the basic features. There's not much. Like I said, it's an AC-DC unit, able to weld aluminum, steel, stainless, or whatever. There's no pulse. It's 185 amps at 35% duty cycle. Now that may not seem like much to you, but for its size, it's the most powerful little 185 on the market. Now the torch that we're using is our basic Trafimet design. It's a little smaller in girth right here. It's a WP-17, which fits the same consumables as our WP-18 and WP-26 torches. But there is a little bit difference in size uh, this is a finger control torch where you have a basic on and off current. Uh, there's no rheostat or anything on this, but there's a basic on and off current. Now the machine also comes with a foot pedal, which has, gives you a foot pedal control over your current range. Uh, there's no fancy finger control or anything like that. This is a basic unit on this part of the machine, but uh, it's very sufficient to weld anything just given enough practice. Now the basic machine, as I said, is from 5 to 185 amps. That's a wide range of control. 5 amp start is really easy, very easy to do. Uh, very fine control at 5 amps. I've welded with this machine. It's very easy to weld with. Uh, high frequency of course, uh, no lift start on this machine. But it's a very good, very basic machine. As you can see, we have the AC frequency control and the AC balance control that I was talking about. And if you're welding AC aluminum, these are the two features that really are uh, of concern to you because this is where you really get the fine tuning in the AC arc. A lot of welders, they don't give you a choice. You're set with it and you just have to forget it. Whether you like it or not, you don't have much to say so about it, so you just weld with it or you don't. Now with this one, you can change it to weld any way you want to on AC so that you have a finer arc, uh, more driving arc, more uh, higher frequency arc, just depending on whatever you want. But uh, like I said, it does have the AC high frequency start uh, and the high frequency start on DC as well. Now you have simple AC, DC selection and you have a panel selection and a pedal selection for welding either with your switch on your torch for your panel control or with your foot pedal of course under your pedal control. As you see the bottom part of the panel is very simple. You have your positive side over here, you have your negative side over here which your torch hooks in directly over here on your negative. You have your control whether it's for your torch or for your foot pedal and you have your quick connect gas fitting, which is unique right now with Everlast. We've uh, brought this out and it's an easy quick connect feature. Very easy to, to, to take your torches and on and off and change them out. Well, we talked briefly about the size, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to put a tape on it. You can see right here. It's 12 and a half inches tall. 7.5 inches wide, actually 7 and a quarter. And for length, we're sitting at just a little under 19 inches. Now, I don't know if you've looked at other 185 amp TIG welders, especially transformer welders, they're much bigger than that. Now, the weight on this machine is really light. It's only about 35 to 40 pounds, depending on how it's equipped with torches and everything. The basic unit's probably 35 pounds or so. Very easy to carry around, very easy to portable, uh, very portable with a strap. You can sling it under your shoulder or whatever and carry it right where you want to use it. Of course, anytime you weld, you need to have the proper safety protection. Even with TIG welding, it's a good idea to have a pair of safety glasses on behind your uh, hood. Um, at least something over your arm. These are Tillman uh, 9215 sleeves. They're made from lambskin, very soft, very pliable but uh, they'll hold up under the heat where some of the cotton sleeves and stuff they'll melt, or not melt, but they'll you know get holes all in them. Here you can see where I've been welding. There's no holes in it, a little black in here, but uh, it's good to go and it protects you from the heat and it keeps you from getting sunburned.
Now I've set up just a basic little welding scenario here. We've got a little bevel plate here. It's a 1 8 inch plate, but I put a little bevel on it so we can get down in there. And we're going to tack weld this up, and you're going to see the arc. I'm going to just keep a controlled arc here, and we're just going to fill this seam up and, and just put in a little root pass here so you can see how easy it welds on DC current. Okay, I've got the welder moved back. I've got the air blocked off right here with a little, a little everlast sign. Uh, breezes will affect anything. Uh, now, was, one of the things, is this has about a three second post flow built in that's automatic and a, and a short free flow. Uh, but uh, if you've got an old regulator like I've got running this thing right now, of course, there'll be a new regulator included. but. Uh, Sometimes you want to hit this thing real quickly to discharge that gas to get the gas flowing uh, to stabilize the arc when you actually want to do it and you don't blow the arc off or blow a hole through it with the force of the arc on coming out. So you may want to just uh, tap the, uh, the support switch real quick or hit the foot pedal real fast to get this thing started and, and your arc will stabilize. I turned up the amps from about 60 to about 70 here. And I did a little bit and I said, you know, I want to go a little faster. I want to go a little bit smoother. And I turned it up to 80 amps right here. Now, uh, it's not a perfect well by any means. It's got some contamination. Heat lines are pretty good. Uh, but uh, right here I, I dipped and I had a little contamination coming in. Um, and uh, we get, the air got blown off the well here. But uh, as you can see, this is you know pretty good bead here. Uh, by no means perfect or pristine, but uh, it's a good little stable arc on the DC. Um, next, we're going to look at the AC. We're just going to do a little bit of AC. Uh, I don't have a lot of lumen right here with me, but uh, we're going to do a little AC, and uh, we're going to watch the arc and how it behaves on that.